All right, good morning. Appreciate everybody being here. Uh, just a uh, little update just with regard to been uh, on our bye week. Had a really good um, time out recruiting with our staff and going across the country and, and uh, really doing uh, a lot of good work of seeing players and evaluating them and being in schools and watching games uh, really kind of for the first time as a collective group. So that was, uh, that was awesome and a chance to really benefit from uh, getting some guys healthier during the bye week and some good practice work in as well and getting our guys a chance to get some mental break, physical break there at the end of the week and, and get, to get a little bit of time away and allow them to be able to come back and had a really good practice yesterday. thought the guys came back really focused and, and worked, uh, worked in the weight room and, and meetings and then on the field uh, in the stadium for a little over an hour. So I thought that was really productive. Really liked the mindset and the way our guys approach that. And uh, we're excited about this week. Great opportunity for us playing the number 10th ranked team in the country in Michigan State being the homecoming. Excited about uh, our, our uh, crowd. The last two home games have been just great crowds and the noise and the, the energy has been awesome. And uh, looking forward to that and uh, really impressed with, uh, with our football team. Coach Tucker's done a great job there um, building that. I know last year was a unique si situation. Uh, coming in there and then having a full year uh, to implement everything. And, and they're playing hard and undefeated at this point and, and both sides of the football and special teams. So very physically sound and, and not turn the ball over on offense and create takeaways on defense and, and uh, just physical and doing, doing a lot of good things. So one of the best uh, running backs in the country, number one in the Big Ten right now. And, uh, and uh, so a really impressive football team and uh, going to play our best. Uh, an update physically. Uh, David Ellis had season-ending surgery on his ankle over uh, the break, and so uh, tried to rehab him, get him back, but that wasn't working the, the right way. So for his long-term prognosis, they uh, went ahead and did that and uh, should uh, have a full recovery and uh, get him hopefully squared away for his future because he's got, uh, got a bright one. I, I truly believe that. So, But his struggle with, uh, with some ankle injuries as he's been here. So um, other than that, questions? Yeah, because the double barrel went on Mike's health, kind of where he's at. I know you, you said weeks to weeks before the bye and how you've seen, you know, Jack maybe slide back into a role that probably isn't totally foreign to him, given obviously he finished last season there mm -hmm. and he spent a lot of the off season basically is de facto QB1 in a lot of practice situations. Yes, absolutely. You know, he was with us all spring as the, as the top guy because of Mike's rehab. And so Mike's rehabbing, as we said before, it's week to week. That hasn't changed. And uh, so uh, the Jack, obviously, as always, will be ready to go. And uh, um, as, as it's been something that's one of his strengths is this ability to be locked in and focused and preparing at a high level, no matter what uh, the role he's been asked to perform. So he'll be ready as always. Hey, Coach, what, when you look at Jack Tuttle, what are the top three or four things that stand out to you about things that he can do to help you guys win Big Ten games? Yeah, first of all, I think uh, just um, preparation sticks out to me. Probably number one, uh, just really just attention to detail, work ethic, film study, um, practice habits, um, just doing little things and walkthroughs, always being ready. Um, that carries over when he was a starter last year and even when he was a backup. Uh, I think uh, his arm talent, you know, he's got to get the ball out fast and, and has a strong arm, has an accurate arm. And also he has the ability to extend plays with his legs, you know, too. That's a positive thing without question. And uh, obviously saw that even last year um, and even uh, when he played even last week. So uh, bottom line is, is that uh, you know, he has started for us and won Big Ten game on the road, which is huge last year and has played uh, many minutes beyond that. And so I just think that his experience as well and then just his leadership, I think he's a strong leader on our team and more verbal uh, in that role and, and uh, does a great job bringing great energy and uh, – Keeping the guys, you know, his, his work ethic is tremendous in the weight room and, and conditioning workouts and everything that we do. So all those things to me all, you know, are very, very positive things to help us win football games. Tom, last week uh, when we got together, we, you talked about uh, sort of uh, hitting the restart button and refresh after the bye week and such. But when do you look back at the first five weeks so far, uh, what has bothered you or concerned you more, the fact that you've lost the games or how you lost them? Well, losing them is probably the, you know, uh, that's the number one thing. And then you go back and you evaluate why and how. And, yeah, it's frustrating, you know, in some ways. And, and uh, you know, you just got to – you learn from it. You know, we go through – we do a five-game analysis, you know, first five games and going through breaking everything down in all three phases and, and looking at uh, the production and different things. And so just the ability for us to – you know, things that stick out to me is, you know, offensively we've not been consistent. 
haven't been able to run the ball consistently, haven't scored enough touchdowns uh, offensively. Uh, those are obvious things. Um, execution hasn't been what it was expected to be. And you know, the play of our quarterbacks, you know, that to me hasn't been to the standard of what we know we have to have to win, win those kind of games. You play those caliber of teams, you know, don't, whether you play them early or play them late, you know, you have to be able to score points when you get down in the red zone. You have to be able to execute. You have to be able to, you know, throw the football, run the football. And, and uh, protect it, you know. So turn the ball over, stuck out in a major way, is a negative for us. Can't do that, and when you do, you lose football games. And that, to me, that's where that really frustrates me a lot is the is the is the turnovers on offense, and then the lack of creating takeaways on defense uh, is is frustrating. We know it goes in cycles. I know sometimes that's part of it, but uh, uh, we've got some, but not near enough. Uh, have played good defense a lot of the time, but not good enough, in my opinion. Uh, still got to get better. Um, got to. Um, continue to improve in the, in the red zone and, and keep them out of the end zone and, and create more takeaways and create more field position for our offense. So I think those are the things that stick out to me. And, and uh, you know, special teams has been solid. Uh, um, I just, but I do think of that one big, long kickoff return that was just backbreaking in, in, in that game in Cincinnati. So, you know, you just uh, – so to me, it's consistent execution in all three phases. Hasn't been there. Uh, that has to be. You play teams of that caliber, they'll make you pay for those mistakes. Uh, if you play maybe a, a lesser teams, they don't show up as much. They may not cost you as much, but those that's not been the case. And we've we've had that opportunity to be able to play some really good football teams, and and uh, therefore we have to be at our best. And it had to be at our best right away, right out of the gate. So, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, it's been frustrating and disappointing. But at the same time, like you said, you hit reset, you learn from those uh, mistakes. We got a, a football team that has a lot of character to it, a lot of toughness to it, a lot of fight, and I expect that to be the case here this weekend. I know it doesn't change for the coaching staff, but in terms of the mindset for the team, have you seen a change in, in the way guys are approaching things compared to where it was at the start of the season? And if so, how do you make sure that you get back to that confident group that you had at the start of the year? Yeah, well, no, I, I think that, uh, you know, um, watching our guys, even watching the practice yesterday and, and just the, the, the visual, um, the eye contact, the buy-in of, of their behavior and their attitude and the way they, how hard they practice, I've been encouraged by that. I thought yesterday the energy was excellent. That's what it's got to be. And uh, I think there was no question that, that the, the time away helped them get some energy back and refreshed. And so, but yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, I, I think you have to continue to, to, to uh, you know, talk to them through the, the, the rough start, you know, and it, it, is, it is what it is. And so you, you are where you are and you have to address those things. And, and uh, it does affect your confidence in, in some ways. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's as extreme as it could have been if we had maybe a younger team. But at the same time, yeah, it definitely affects you. I mean, you don't feel the same way as you would if you were in a different situation. But at the same time, you know, we got a lot of strong leaders on our team. And, and you got to be able to flush all that. You, you got to be able to, you know, zero, zero coming out of, the, out of the break. It's just a new, fresh start for our guys. And that's what we have to look at. That's where we're going to look at it. And to be able to approach it in a way that we can't change the past, we can learn from the past. And uh, we don't like where we are, but we're going to attack where we are. And that, to me, is, is the focus. And that, to me, is, is the, the mindset we have. And uh, like I said, we have a lot of strong leaders on this team, and they need to rise up, and I expect them to. And uh, there's, a, there's a toughness to this group. And there's a fight to this group that you have to have to be able to, to persevere through tough times. And right now, we're going through some disappointing tough times. And that's, that's part of life. And uh, if you can't respond to it and you can't handle it, then, uh, you know, then things won't change. But if you can't, then you can create change for yourself on a daily basis, consistent basis. That's what I expect this team to do. I think so. Yeah, I think it was great timing. You know, I don't ever get to control that. Don't don't pick those. They they pick us, and and so. Uh, but it did for this set of circumstances. It was a good timing for us to be able to get away a little bit, get uh, get healthier, and be able to uh, reset. Coach, I guess just over the past two weeks, what meetings have been had between you and your offensive staff and kind of what have you guys discussed about maybe changing what we're going to see in the second half of the season compared to what we've seen during the first five weeks here? Yeah, a lot of film meetings, a lot of sit down one on one, it's a chance to go with me and the staff, watching things, watching plays, talking things through, figuring things out, uh, making some adjustments. So there's no question trying to do everything we can do to possibly uh, create change on that side of the football, to create uh, more consistency in our, in our execution, to create more points at the end of the day. That's what it's about. It's about scoring points on offense and, and being able to protect the football and making good decisions with with our offense and putting our guys in position. And when they get put in that position, they got to make plays. And, and that's really what it's going to come down to. But, yeah, there's no gap. There's no question. Looking at everything, run game, throw game, you know, just the schematic part of it, timing of it all, the tempo of it all, just trying to continue to improve and get better and have to. It's just uh, – Backs against the wall, got to come out swinging. 
coach, obviously your offense is going to look a little bit different without Mike. You already talked about the strengths of Tuttle, but you're also talking about you're having emerging leaders that you're going to need going into Michigan. So who are those leaders on the offensive side of the ball that you're really going to be counting on for this week? You know, I think it starts up front. You know, Caleb Jones, to me, has to be a guy that steps up in his leadership. Uh, Dylan Powell, you know, guy that's played a lot of football, our center, you know, and uh, – Matt Bedford, same thing, guys that have been here and played. Those guys, Stephen Carr to me, uh, Peyton Hendershot, uh, Ty Fry Fogel, guys that we've counted on, guys that have made plays in the past, guys that need to rise up, elevate, uh, need to uh, to really uh, elevate their game, their preparation, uh, all the things that they bring to this team to be able to help help us um, to be able to execute and in those, those critical moments, those critical plays, those guys got to make plays. They do. And so it's more than just the verbal leadership. That's part of it. It's, it's the attitude you bring to practice. It's the effort you bring to practice. That's part of it. That's really a constant. But it's stepping up in the game and making plays. And you're, whatever your role is, whatever position you play, being able to help us get first down, sustain drives, and get that ball in the end zone. So that those are guys that stick out to me. There's others as well. But it's a collective group effort without question. And obviously the, the, the quarterback room, you know, whoever's under center needs to be the guy leading the show. One of the biggest questions I got doing some radio interviews during the bye week was, does Indiana need more creativity on offense? What are your thoughts on that? How do you answer that? Well, I think that uh, you always want to be as creative as you can be, but at the end of the day, you got to execute. You know, so that, that to me is really what we got to – we got to protect the football. You can't turn the ball over. You know, I mean, you turn the ball over – as many times as we have in those big games, and, and you're not going to get the results you want. I don't care who you are. I don't care how creative you are. I don't care how many different kind of plays you run. Uh, there's no question I want to be able to do things that create misdirection and, and create hesitancy in the defense and make them not just be able to sit there and tee off on you and, and be able to not be 100% sure in their reads that maybe want them to question whether where the ball is or what we're going to be doing or the tempo or different things like that. To me, that's definitely what you want to see. But at the end of the day, even all that said, you have to execute. And it's about protecting the football, executing, and blocking the right way, blocking the right people, and making sure that we, you know, catch the football, run, secure it, don't give it to them, and, and execute. So execution would probably be more important than that, yes. But within that realm of, of, of executing and, do, and protecting the football, creativity is always positive, yes. I guess, sorry to get sort of overly schematic or detailed, but especially as you, you think about kind of bringing Jack into certain things, and, and I know you see you, 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 you trust him to push the ball down the field, but maybe he doesn't quite have the explosiveness downfield that Mike has. Mm -hmm. Do you think about things that maybe, I guess, elements of the offense that can widen the defense out a little bit, stretch things horizontally, things that related to timing, maybe getting the ball out of Jack's hands quickly, that kind of thing? Yeah, and, and I think those are also driven, too, by who you're playing and, and what they do schematically as well. But, yeah, I think there's no question. Like I said, the, the whole objective is you want to be able to stress the defense. Um, you know, you want to stress them in different ways, you know, and, and you talk about stressing them laterally and vertically. Those both, both directions have to be stressed to be able to make them feel the strain of the scheme on them and then to be able to – to get the ball placed in the right spots based on the strength of your quarterback and what he can do and what, what his strengths are in both his arm talent and leg talent, different things that he can bring to the table. So, yeah, I think those are all part of it for sure. And, and uh, But, yeah, without getting too many things that uh, too specific about what we need to be able to do, we, we just gotta, we're looking at all those things for sure and being able to, to help our offense be effective. And at the end of the day, we got to score points. That's what it comes down to. It's what you're judged on. It's what you're based off of. And, and it's a collective team effort, offense, defense, special teams working together to create those points. And uh, we got to continue to do that. We got to be, I think, play better complementary football, offense, defense, and special teams working together. Tom, with with Baldwin's transfer or in portal, whatever, and with Ellis out for the year, your running back room has gotten a lot slimmer here in the last couple of weeks. Can you talk a little bit about what you plan in that area? Who might be stepping up to get more opportunities? Yeah, it definitely uh, looks different than it did in the beginning and uh, um, not what we expected it to look like this, you know, after five games, you know, but uh, uh, David Holloman to me is a guy that uh, uh, needs to step up and uh, uh, here is a true freshman and uh, he's been working with our with our uh, ones and twos the last few practices and you know, Charlie Spiegel, same thing. He's been here. Uh, just a guy that understands our system and, and can do a lot, a lot of different things within that part of it as well. And and uh, even Trent, Trent Holland, you know, to me, Trent Holland's a guy that's been here, came off of surgery a year ago, coming in as a true freshman, big physical guy. But uh, so he's been there as well, getting some reps. But uh, yeah, those guys got to step up, and and we have guys in that room. And you know, the two other guys have been playing. You know, uh, Davion's been playing quite a bit. He needs to continue to step up and elevate. And same with Chris Childers. Just those two guys have got to continue.
continue to, to grow and, and their role will be expanded without question. But that whole room, everybody's going to have to step up and, and do their part and uh, help us find a way to, to uh, move the football and, and create points. Following up on uh, on a uh, Powell in there, you, you, you talked about kind of how he's coming back from 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 a surgery last year. Is that kind of what's more holding him back from being on on the field more at this point? And what kind of I guess what what kind of do you want to see from him to see him on the field a little bit more? Um, and with him and uh, and uh, David Holloman too, kind of giving them opportunities now with Stephen Carr. Obviously, well, who know? I mean, he won't be here next year. So those are guys that are going to be mm -hmm. you know seeing more prominent playing time. Yeah, I'd say first with Trent. Yeah, he had the surgery, so when he came in to to report, you know, he was in a limited basis, didn't get into fall camp right out of the gate because of that, was being brought along as that, you know, it was, he had an ACL surgery as a high school player. So that uh, happened during the winter time uh, when he was playing basketball. And so uh, basically, um, you know, just recovering from that. So that's why he got, couldn't put him behind, you know, even coming into fall camp. So he would be further behind than the rest just because of that. And, this, and he's fully been released. He's fully practicing. But but uh, just didn't get the reps wasn't with uh, the uh, uh, with our um, first, second, third groups during fall camp. So uh, he would be a little bit further behind that regard. But then David, you know, has been here the whole time and been, obviously he's young. And so he's just learning everything. And he's been with the scout team the first few weeks of the season and same with Trent. And so just those guys have to, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we've had guys come in here before that were young and had to play, you know, with that position. And, you know, Stevie Scott plays as a true freshman. And uh, that's not uh, um, and that unusual for that to happen. And so obviously these circumstances are not what anybody expected, but, but at the same time, opportunity presents itself. And when it does, you gotta, you gotta seize it and be ready for it. it. It's safe to describe you as an excitable guy. What, what excites you for the second half of the season for this team that you haven't seen yet that you're still looking forward to seeing? Well, I just play our best football. You know, we haven't played our best football. We haven't played together. We haven't played all three phases working together. And, and that's been a challenge for our guys. That, hey, the, have, when, you, when you ask them as a group, they're like, you know, they know. They know we haven't. And, and they know we can. And they, and they expect us to. And so, to me, that excites me because we have a you know, great opportunity ahead of us, a like great, uh, very challenging schedule, an awesome schedule to be able to play against the best in the country and each and every week and guys to be able to step up. That's why they came here, you know. And to me, that's what excites me because, yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity for this football team to get better to face adversity in the eye, to not back down from it, and to grow together, and to get stronger together, and to learn to fight together, and to learn to finish together, and play our best. So to me, the biggest thing is, is, is for us to be able to play our best football together. Complimentary offense, defense, special teams, working together, creating opportunities for the other sides of the ball, and when those opportunities come, they seize them, we take advantage of it, and we continue to um, feed off of that, and feed off each other. So that, to me, we haven't done that yet, collectively, as a whole group for a full game, We've done it in spurts, but we got to do it together. We've got to do it for four quarters. Two quick things, Tom. I know you don't like to talk about injuries and availability and such during a week, but uh, in regards, just so we're clear, on this week, you're not going to talk about whether Michael is practicing or not, and you're not going to talk about whether he's available or not until noon on Saturday, correct? Correct. Okay. They'll find out at kickoff. Okay. And then secondly, on that, uh, Michigan State's running game is, has been been very, very good, and you've yes. obviously handled them pretty well the last couple of years. But what in particular about their running game have you seen that really has you concerned? Number nine. I mean, he's, he's really good. You know, great balance, uh, great vision, um, makes guys miss, um, patient, uh, strong, tough, runs hard. Um, he's, you know, right now leading rusher in the Big Ten, on the top of the country. Um, just, uh, yeah, he makes them different. You know, a lot, they got a you know, similar scheme in some ways, um, but uh, the guy carrying the ball uh, makes a big difference. And they got other guys as well that carry the football, but he, he sticks out without question and for all those reasons I just said, and, and he makes them really, really special. And uh, they do a great job. They're big up front. You know, they're strong up front. They O-line's playing well. They play together. Uh, they have a good complementary system. They play action off of that. Quarterback's throwing the ball well. He's, he's protecting the ball, um, taking shots down the field. Last week, they got several really big explosive plays, especially in the first half, that were, were game-changing plays. And uh, they got uh, several really talented receivers that uh, do a great, great job. So that, to me, but the run game is what kind of makes it go. 
and it gives them their identity for sure. And they stick with that. They play with that, and they're going to you know be true to that for sure. So you got to you got to gang tackle them, you know. But then that the challenge with that is you gang tackle them, and they're going to you know they're going to they play action off of all that. So you got to be very disciplined with your eyes and read your keys and and fit your gaps. You can't you make a miss. You know, his first his first run the whole season was a 75 yard touchdown run against Northwestern. First time he touched the football, and uh, so just bounced the ball outside, and, and nobody caught him. So uh, just uh, he's a special player, and uh, we have a lot of respect for him. But uh, hey, that's what you in this league you're gonna, we got several really good running backs that we're going to be defending here the next several weeks and so he's uh one of many coach just to kind of follow up on that kind of can you just expand on that a little bit what is it that makes michigan state so good why do you think they are a top 10 team in the country right now with how they're playing well first of all you run the football and they don't turn the ball over they're creating takeaways on defense uh their defense bends a little bit they give up some yards they don't give up points so when you don't give up points you don't give up a lot of explosive plays um, you're protecting on offense, you're running on offense, you're scoring points, you're averaging, you know, almost 40 points a game on offense and, and, and not giving up a lot on defense, you know. So, and special teams are really solid. They've had two, you know, returns for touchdowns, uh, big ones and, you know, really game-defining ones. You know, starting one game with a punt return for touchdown really kind of allowed them to tie the game up against Nebraska to send it to overtime. And then they won the game in overtime, you know. So just playing good, solid, sound football, uh, not beating themselves, you know, don't have a lot of penalties, don't make a lot of mistakes, um, and that's big. That's really, it's, it's, they're playing winning football. You know, when you talk about it, you talk about how you want to do it as a football team, but it starts up front for them, you know, running the football, stopping the run on defense, and, and like I said, the, the, the turnovers, you know, protected it on offense, create takeaways on defense. That, to me, really, can you even look at that Miami game? I mean, it was, it was a really close fourth quarter, you know, three-point game in the fourth quarter, and takeaways opened it up they went down and scored both times off those two takeaways and then you get then kind of it, it becomes a completely different finish than it really because it was close the whole way up until you get to the fourth quarter so and that's what you want to be able to do in, to a football team so they're doing a good job of playing complimentary football and winning football and therefore they're undefeated and ranked 10th in the country awesome have a great day leo